Now I'm going to give you the three rules for significant figures, and they all deal with zero. Zero is before a number, in the middle of a number, after a number. Let's look at number one. We begin counting sig figs with the first non-zero number. So look at this. If I have point, let's do 0 0.00372. I can't count any of those beginning zeros because you start counting with the first non-zero number. Um, these are just placeholders. They're telling us that the number begins at the thousands place. So placeholder is not necessarily the certainty and the guess. So counting this, I have one, two, three, three sig figs. And notice I do SF for our abbreviation, three sig figs. So you can't count any zeros at the beginning. You always begin with the first non-zero number. Rule number two, this is the easiest one for sure. Count zeros in between non-zero numbers. Let's say that we have 90,207. So let's count our sig figs. I see two zeros and they are both flanked, surrounded by non-zero numbers so we can count them. This would have one, two, three, four, five five sig figs. And little reminder, these first four numbers are certain. This last number, that's the guess. So this could be an A, a nine, maybe a five or a six. But with certainty, we know the nine, zero, two, and zero. The 90,200 down to that tens place. That's what we know for certain. This is the one that trips students up. Only count zero at the end of a number or excuse me, yeah, only count zero at the end of the number if there's a decimal. If there's not a decimal, you can't count the zeros at the end of the number. So let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, let's say that I have 8,000. Notice that decimal right there. That means I can count the zeros. One, two, three, four. There are four sig figs. Now to contrast that, if I had 8,000, <gasps> with no decimal, we've only got one sig fig. And that one sig fig is actually the guess. So it, it really doesn't tell us a lot. Uh, now, this is a common question that students will ask me. Well, what if there's zeros before and after the decimal? You can count all of them. Check this out. If I've got 8,000.00, there's the decimal, and I can count all of the zeros at the end of a number, if there's a decimal. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six sig figs on this one. So let's say that um, I'm going to buy um, peaches. Peaches are in, in season right now. I'm going to buy peaches from a farmer and he's giving, I'm buying them by the pound, okay? So he says, I have 8,000 pounds and the decimal point's right here. I'm like, awesome. He's definite that he's giving me 8,000 pounds all the way down to the tens place. The ones, that one pound, maybe he's giving me a bonus two, maybe there's one pound less. But I'm like, oh good, I know down to the tens place, he's certain. He says, yeah, I'm, here's your 8,000 pounds and there's no decimal there. That could be 9,000 pounds of peaches, 5,000 pounds of peaches. Um, that doesn't tell me a whole lot. But wow, this one, love this farmer right here. I'm giving you 8,000 pounds of peaches down to the hundreds place, is the guess. So they would know with certainty the mass all the way down to that tenths place and the hundreds place would be the guess. Um, so the more significant figures we have, the more uh, certainty uh, that we have. Pretty cool. Now, putting this all together, here's a challenge problem for you. Look at this, and I want you to count sig figs. Zero point zero zero two zero six four zero so look at that for just a second it incorporates all three rules how many sig figs how many sig figs does that have let me walk it out with you we've got one two three four five five sig figs and let's review the rules so i can't be, count the beginning uh, zeros I have to start with the first non-zero number. I can count the zero that's in between non-zero numbers. That's rule number two. Rule number three, I can count the zero at the end because there's a decimal. That is how you count significant figures.